ex-wife used to say is that, you know, you're saving the world without a cross. That's what you do. You're always trying to help someone, protect something. Hey, it's just my nature, you know. My father and I were lobstering out of, out of Norwalk here, lobstering out in the Sound, and we would buy um, lobster bait in various places. One of the places that we found to buy lobster bait was up in Nyack, New York on the Hudson River from a guy named Bob Gabrielson. Uh, shad fishermen tend to fish for the female fish, which they sell shad roe, and then they try to find a market for the male fish, and we use the male fish for lobster bait. When I got to know Bob, he said, hey Bob, you always thought a, an atheist could walk across the Hudson River. It looks, doesn't look all bad to me. He said, that's because of uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. and uh, John Cronin, he's our river keeper. And he was the newly minted Hudson River Keeper by about three or four years, and I got talking to Bobby and John, and we formed the Connecticut Coastal Fishermen's Association of, uh, probably 30 years ago, and we started bringing lawsuits, Clean Water Act lawsuits, empowered by the United States Congress, that when government didn't do its job or other uh, prosecuting pollution or its job in treating sewage and, and treating pollution, that the citizens were empowered to take the place of the United States Attorney General. And that's what we did. And our first settlement was with the city of Norwalk. We had, uh, they had tens of thousands of violations of the Clean Water Act at the sewage treatment plant. So we came to an agreement that they would set a benchmark, set up a series of benchmarks enforceable by the court to improve the plant or replace the plant. And uh, they settled with us for $87,000. We, you know, we never, our whole approach was not about getting money, but we set up with, uh, through the uh, stipulated agreement with the court and the city of Norwalk, and Soundkeeper was created. We did a number of uh, projects with other people in, uh, in, in the area. One lady wanted to map the existing wetlands on the islands, and we helped do that. And, so that sound, that's how Soundkeeper was born here, uh, but we also had brought cases against uh, Greenwich and Stanford and uh, Bridgeport, Stratford, Milford, New Haven, Norwalk. Um, and slowly uh, began to win all those cases, and now, as if you look up and down the case, 25 years later, the coast there's almost a new sewage treatment plant in every town. And that was from that uh, activity in that time. I think our first case, our very first case as the Connecticut Coastal Fishermen's Association was a Remington Gun Club in Stratford. Um, there was a lot of lead being put into the water and that lead was being found in the marine shorebirds. Another one that was similar to that was down in the uh, New York State, New York Athletic Club down in uh, New Rochelle had a, a very similar operation underway. We brought that case and put an end to that. Not that we were against the shooting sports, but you know, shooting them over the water was a way to dump your trash into the water without having to clean up. So I was the, the second keeper. Uh, my role here on the Sound was very different than John's role up on the Hudson, being a fisherman and living here, uh, although John did a great job on the Hudson, and Paul Galay, who's the current uh, river keeper, does a great job, but it was Long Island Sound Keeper right here. His first public introductions was the hour in Norwalk, which always amazed me. How did we grow into the Waterkeeper Alliance? Uh, we went viral before there was an internet to go viral with. We had I had people calling me from California and New Jersey and other parts of the country saying they wanted to start a keeper. Uh, Andy Wilner, you know, New York, New Jersey keeper uh, was uh, Mike Hers was out the first uh, keeper in uh, San Francisco Bay. Then Terry Tanneman in San Diego. I mean Santa Monica. And it, the way it grew is the stories would be picked up by AP and they'd get out in places like the Times Picayune, the Los Angeles Times, the Cleveland Plain Dealer. People would read about it and say, hey, we want to do that. We have a right. The whole premise was is that the water and the, and the 
marshes and Long Island Sound and its components belong to the people of the state of Connecticut and New York. And the government is the trustee. And the trustee was failing to do their job. Keep the water swimmable and fishable. Amen. The Waterkeeper Alliance, which we built, uh, I was principal in driving that uh, as one of the directors, was an uh, organization like a big umbrella that would be there to help connect the different organizations, support their efforts in the national level, and it's worked out great. And today as I speak, there are over 200 water keepers in 20 countries on six continents water keeper organizations, including places like India, Nepal, China, Australia, Northern Iraq, Russia, um, and all based in, out of what was done right here on Long Island Sound. What I think needs to be done right now is to attack and somehow get at stormwater runoff coming off all our streets. We've worked on that. We've had a special project in Norwalk where we had 400 storm drain filters in. We've come to understand that vault system at the end of certain pipes. You don't have to do every pipe. You have to do the ones that increase with heavy load. And we'll be able to get grease and oil and bacteria out of that. Now that's one step. The next step is how do you treat stormwater runoff instead of running it all down into the, into the streets and into the collection system create rain gardens and big expansive areas that will be able to collect the water and use it in plant growth. There are a number of low impact developments uh, proposed by different engineers and being used in different communities around the sound that might be used in other places. So it's a, it's a process and it's going to be uh, worth doing and I plan, uh, but given the grace of God, I plan on being here to help do it. Well, we've come a long way, but you know this is not 25 years, let's stop pat ourselves on the back and look what we've done. This is 25 years, yeah, we did a good job staying alive and doing this. What's the next 25 look like? And that's what I've been talking to you about today.